up everybody so um, going to do something a little bit different than what oh phone's going off one second than what I I guess normally do um, I, I said uh, right now I'm in my 30 days of uh, I guess we could say initial morning um I wasn't sure if I was actually going to do this, but this may prove to be therapeutic for some. Well, therapeutic for me, it, it might help other people. Uh, I wanted to start this yesterday, as well, like I said, in the, you know, I guess we could say Jewish calendar, Jewish makeup, sunset to sunset is a day. Just shy of sunset on um, May 12th. <clears throat> is uh, when I found out that my father passed away. And in the vlog that I did, I did not mention who the deceased person was, only because uh, trying to contain myself and, you know, it's, I don't know, it was just one of those where I, I knew that it, had I said it right then and knowing that I was so upset, well, give me a second, y'all. Y'all finna just get me raw. Hold on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm all over the place emotionally, physically, everything else. Please excuse the fact that I don't have a shirt on right now. Um, but <clears throat> I know, I say in the Jewish faith, you know, you're supposed to have 30, well, I say if you're really close to the deceased person, so uh, spouse, um, children typically uh, sit in the house of the deceased person. <clears throat> I'm currently in North Carolina. I'll be um, heading to Chicago this um, this upcoming Tuesday. Like I said, right now it's uh, May 14th. It's Saturday. So um, <clears throat> I've already bought the ticket and everything. I'm only going to be in Chicago for eight days. So from Tuesday to Tuesday. And the 24th is when I come back. <clears throat> the only thing is I am taking 30 days of leave as of this upcoming Tuesday, which puts me past 30 days of mourning, <clears throat> but I know that I'm just going to need a little bit of time, and like, <clears throat> I guess we could say within the first 24 hours, because right now I guess I'm giving you day one and day two, <sighs> within the first 24 hours, it was, um, I, I went through every emotion known to man um <clears throat> my uh my brother my middle brother sent me a um a glide because this is how we communicated with each other in korea and i'm back stateside now but i do like the fact that he sent me a glide only because of the simple fact that it's still it's one thing to send a text message he knows that i'm at work so phone call probably wouldn't work but just <clears throat> kind of seeing uh, him talk to me. So the very first glide message uh, was, uh, you know, you wanted to catch up with me because we hadn't talked in a while, and we don't. I'm not a very phonesy type person. I don't really like being on phones all that much. I like talking to people one on one <laughs> or being able to see that person's face, uh, natural reaction to things. And I'm like, yeah, I'll call my brother. <clears throat> um, but then he hit me with the, um, I want to put a bug in your ear. You know, you might want to call daddy. And, you know, daddy says that, you know, he really wants to talk to you and all this other stuff. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, I'm going to keep it 100, which I'm keeping funky. Like, I went from just like, okay, yeah, I want to meet my brother. I will not meet my brother, but talk to my brother later on tonight to literally just being upset because it's like okay here we are we are doing the same exact shit that we have done you know for the past 20 some odd damn years this is what the fuck we're doing you know and it's that and it's like i got so upset because like instead of my father because this thing you want to talk to me you know my, and like I said, for those of y'all who follow me, y'all have a general idea of the relationship and shit, you know. What a lot of people don't know is that in my stubbornness, I did call him after almost two and a half years. And 
I had expressed uh, <clears throat> some stuff to him, and I'll mention it a little bit later on chronologically to kind of give you guys how the hell I'm dealing with everything. <laughs> and, um, you know, I was just like, you know, like, my phone is on, so why are you calling my brothers and telling them that, you know, you really want to talk to me, yet you know my phone is on, and as easily as you are calling my brothers, you can easily call me, so I, I was some, I was pissed, I was furious, I was just, you know, a little bit of everything, a little bit of everything, and I was running a urinalysis at the, at the, well, actually, I was wrapping up a urinalysis, and, I, and it was one of those where, like, that shit infuriates me, because it's like, you know, my father has been doing this for the longest, where it's like, you, he goes to my brother, because these are his children now, but he goes to my brothers, and he gives them whatever story he wants to give them. And it's like with my family and, and I'm pretty sure he's told this to his siblings. And mind you, my father is the oldest of all four. No, it's 15 of them. Of all 15 of uh, them. So, you know, he has 14 siblings. So, I'm pretty sure my name has gotten thrown out there. And I'm just like, okay, all right. But I was nothing short of piss. So... I didn't respond to my brother right then because, again, I'm still working. And I do know that with my father, if I do call him, we're not going to have a conversation over five minutes. But because I'm still at work, I didn't want to call. I didn't want to get work the fuck up. Because I, 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 I know that's how things go. And I'm just like, let me get done with work. And it was one of those where I'll consider everything when I'm done with work. So I get back from turn in the uh, urine specimens I get back change into my workout clothes so we go work out as you know a group and while I'm working out my phone and my watch is going off saying that okay a glide has came in from my brother and I'm like and I'm in the middle of working out so I'm like I'm not finna check it but in the back of my mind it's like it's seldom <laughs> It's one thing to text me more than once in a day. It's another thing to glide me more than in one day with dealing with my brother. Because we, like I said, he said, like I said, he uh, had uh, his baby earlier this year, which I, I was kind of sad that um, I missed out on that. So I'll get to see my niece when I go home. That might bring me some some joy. But it's not to say that he does not have my number. You know, so it's one thing for us to text. It's another thing to sit here and send me a glide back to back. And when he sent me the glide back to back, you know, it's like in the midst of working out, I didn't want to, like, I'm not paying attention to it, but I'm just like, something is up. Something has to be fucking up because this shit just doesn't happen. It, it, just, it just doesn't happen. So, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm glad it, I'm glad it's that and not not the tears even though my fucking eyes are welled up right now um he um yeah so he sent that and I get done working out I'm talking with somebody I'm just like and I'm just running this shit down and I, I, you know, it should have been something because things in life just don't happen. It just, sh things just don't happen without there being a reasoning. And it's been weird that my pops has been on the brain for the past month. And it's not that he's been on my mind, on my mind, but he's come up in conversation more in the last month than <laughs> any other time. So that probably should have been a sign that something was moving because like I said, I'm very, I'm very in tune when it comes to just, you know, being spiritual and just how things move. So I was kind of, you know, I totally miss that. So I get done working out, go back into the company. Um, and I, something in my damn spirit said, do not check this glide until you get back to your damn room. 
I didn't do it. <laughs> I checked it right then, and I heard in his voice. I heard it in his voice that I knew some shit didn't happen. And it was simple deduction between... At this point, it would have been one of three people. It would have been... No, I'm sorry. It would have been one of... Uh, no, one of five people. It would have been my mother's husband. It would have been my other, it would have been one, my other two brothers. It would have been my father. Or my mother. So it would have been five people in question. But given the circumstances, I'm just like... It's my father. And then he does have uh, um, medical issues that I don't know about. And my, my father passed away at 67. I'm currently 29. My father's birthday is in October. Mine is in December. So y'all can just subtract. Do, do the math that you need to do. But 67, he would have been uh, 68 in October. I'll be 30 then this year. So that kind of gives you an idea of when I came along in uh, the picture. But um, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, lose a little. Uh, I don't. I don't lost track of that. Oh, I remember. So he has medical issues, and I don't know about all of them. And my father, being older, he's part of the baby boomer generation, and. You know, with this generation, you know, and I'm I'm really gonna keep it funky. If I if I have any baby boomers that are like watching this, or if you are from that generation or whatever, it's gonna be like, don't take offense to what I'm about to say. But I know for many of them, it's just like, um, or one like, and there's different things, you know. <clears throat> if we if we as children have wronged them, they're quick to remember it. But as soon as we tell them that they wronged us, they catch an amnesia real quick. My my pops is very good for that one, um, but at the same exact time, I think this is right. What I'm about to say now is more of a uh, you know African a black people thing, but also ties in with the baby boomers. But it's just like you know we keep business in house, but more or less for a lot of the baby boomers that can't that are you know black. You don't know what's going on with them. It, you know the pride, the stubbornness. So I didn't know. I still don't know what like my father was dealing with. And I hope that when I go to Chicago that I will um, have um, knowledge of this. Because, you know, like I said, I have high blood pressure. I know where I get that from. But it's one of those where, you know, I want to know what my parents... Because I, I, I highly doubt they knew what their parents dealt with. But I want to know what my parents deal with. Because, again, between the two of them, that makes up me. So... You know, I want to know. I, I definitely want to know to better prepare myself. Um, but <clears throat> I, th I think when it all happened, I just knew. I just knew. I just knew. I just knew what it was when I heard my brother's voice. Um, and... I started, my, my, I started to crack a little bit because um, I had always said I don't know how um, I would respond when I found out that my father passed because we've had such a rocky relationship. Like, I, I, I already know that, um, and I've had a rocky relationship with my brothers, too. well, my older brothers, not my younger brothers, my older brothers, too. So, but it's one of those where a lot of, um, a lot of wounds have been, uh, cleaned, uh, had the time to properly heal, um, between my brothers and I, my father and I, not so much. And, you know, it was still just a lot where, you know, <clears throat> knowing my parents and knowing my makeup, it, um... It says a lot because both my parents are fucking stubborn. And for those who know me, I am stubborn too. So it doesn't help that, you know, I have that. I deal with that. And I'm not one. I, it's very seldom that I'll sit here and I'll just suck up and be like, you know what? I'll be the bigger man. But with he and I, 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 I just didn't do it. Partially, uh, couldn't do it. 
and it just it just was what it was. But I heard that news, and but it's not it's not that I heard the news. I heard my brother's voice because you can hear in somebody's voice when some shit is, le- especially if you are in tune. I heard it, and then he said it. And there was uh, some a coworker who was sitting right there because she heard the first uh, glide and she heard this one. Her first instinct was to hug me, which I needed that. Um, working on Red Cross message, and it again, it was just like I did not know how I would respond um, when I heard the news and. Cause I didn't know if I was gonna be cold. I didn't know. I, I I didn't. I just didn't fucking know. And I ended up kind of where I'm at right now. Um, and I still haven't broke. Like even though I'm tearing up right now, and you guys are probably gonna like these will be the first. No, these will be the second set of tears. The first tears are kind of I I kind of walked away before somebody could see them. But these would be like the second set, but real first set of tears that I've had. But um. It, it hit me and I know uh, let, me, let me not say no I hope that when I go home I don't have to deal with um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for I, I've said it I've said it this week and I can't think of the damn word um, like the whole guilt trip because you know, so many people know the relationship of my father and I, but they don't know. They only know his side of what has happened between us, and they don't know what the real is. And, you know, Like I said, I went to almost two and a half years without talking to my father, and we talked. Well, it wasn't really we talked. It was more of I had to kind of clear the air because he felt that I didn't love him. He felt that I hated him because I didn't talk to him for almost two and a half years, and I can see why someone would feel that way, and anyone that knows me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm something else. I'm a character. I don't, I, I don't like to be vulnerable. I don't trust easy. And it's one of those where give me once, that's it. I, I can't do, like, it's one of those where it's like, if there's an issue between you and I, I will feed you with a 50 foot spoon. Period. But of course, dealing with family more or less parents is kind of hard to do that. It was just I killed all communication between he and I, more or less because he cussed me out from here to sunset before I left for Korea. And I'm like, okay, you not finna talk to me like I'm some random ass motherfucker on the street and think that this shit gonna be cool, you know? And that's why we didn't talk. But when I called him, um, I, you know, because he was like, I know you hate me, and, and I had to tell him like, I don't hate you. I don't. I, I I love you. You know, because <laughs> I'm. I, if I feel a certain way about you, you will know. But I don't hate my father. You know, then and even now, you know, and it's one of those where I could have easily called him other names <laughs> that you hear in you know the black community and even just amongst other people who. Or, or people raised by their parents as, you know, uh, you know, a sperm donor or shit like that. I've never done that. You know, again, I still have that reverence for my parents. So, you know, he was still my, and he still is my father. But after hearing the news, processing everything, um, you know, it's, uh, I wasn't, I, w- I didn't feel regret. Because had I not reached out to him to even say that, yeah, that would have been some regret there. But even then, I don't know if it would have been heavy. But I know that I did everything that I could. And the fact that he heard the words from my lips that I don't hate you. I, in fact, love you. 
Because I do. You know, um, that I think that is what's helping me a lot right now is knowing that that has been said. But not everybody in my family knows that that conversation happened because they don't need to know that this conversation happened. But I feel that when I go home, I'm probably going to have to deal with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to have to deal with hearing that shit and I already have it plugged in my mind after the funeral I'm going straight back to the house I'm I'm not going to stay there because I know that I'm in control of my emotions but right now I'm emotionally unstable when I say I have gone through every fucking emotion in one day <laughs> in a 24 hour period I went through I think every emotion known to man other than other than deep sorrow because that breaking point has not happened yet. And <laughs> even though I am I know I'm a piece of work, I'm like, I'm sitting here praying like, you know, Hashem, please don't let me cry at work. <laughs> don't let me cry on the plane. Don't let me cry in the airport. <laughs> you know, like, and I, I know, I know Hashem's probably looking down just like, really, bro? <laughs> But, dealing, like I said, dealing with that, I have not been posting any of what's been going on, on social media because, one, I, I'm somewhat past that in my life. Of course, this video is going to go up, but I want, like I said, it's general motion, kind of chronic, like, you know, just detailing the day to day of what I'm going through. And it's almost somewhat of, somewhat of a homage to my father, somewhat. But, because in the Jewish faith, you're supposed to have 30 days to mourn. Like, it's one of those where you take that time out and mourn. And the mourning is never done. But, you know, in America where it's like, you know, you lose somebody, the first instinct is to get right back to work. And, you know, lose yourself in work. I'm actually doing that now. I lost myself in work yesterday. Right now, I'm just trying to just deal Stay somewhat occupied, but there's no way to sit here and stay occupied when again I know I lost my biological father. And I go back and I'm going back to work Monday. Tuesday is when I fly into Chicago. And like I said I'm only taking a week only because I want to be there to uh, I'm really just there to be a um I don't wanna say a shield, but a shoulder to my brothers and to my mother because I don't know because everybody we're all taking it one way now and I know that my brothers more or less are and my sister are really taking it heavy and I say that be, especially my um my baby brother because um you know uh People have been trying to call them. They said that it would ring or the voicemail, but on Thursday it went straight to voicemail. So that raised so much of a concern. And my my baby brother went over there to check. Uh, landlord was playing games, so he went through the window, and it was then that my baby brother walked in and saw my father on the floor. And he had been walking to the bathroom, uh, eating food, and he slipped. Hit the uh, back of his head. I don't know if he was in the bathroom when he slipped. Again, it's a lot that I don't know. And part of me, I, I just don't want to. I don't want to know more right now because I'm still just trying to deal with everything. I'll know more in the next couple of days. But he slipped, hit his head. There was blood. But he was also chewing food, and there was signs that he could have possibly choked. So this was a freak accident. And I feel so bad for my baby brother because he had to see that. He walked in and saw it. So, you know, just dealing with all that and, you know, family has been posting this on Facebook. I feel so bad for my father's side of the family because uh, he lost uh, one of his sisters last year right before I left to come here. I wasn't uh, all that close to my Aunt Lisa. I'm just going to be honest. 
a couple weeks ago found out that I lost my aunt Stell, which is another sister of my father's, and I was close to Stell. And people around me wanted me to take leave. I'm just like, I, I, I just don't want to do it. I, I just don't want to do it. And I'm glad I didn't because I would be a hot mess if I left to go get back and then find out that my father passed away. I, I'm i still functioning. That I wouldn't be able to function if that happened. So the Thomas I family has lost three. So 15 siblings, three have passed away in le in less than a year because my aunt Lisa passed away right before I left here. I got home in July. So in less than a year, they've lost three siblings or three key people. And if I can just be honest with my with you guys and just honest with myself and my feelings, you know, because people have been posting on Facebook. I had the most that I've done is I put up a three picture of myself in the middle, my father on the left, and my mother on the right, just so people can see that you know, regardless of what you think, I do love this man. But it's because of these two people made me. <laughs> you know, because there has been it's been a running gag in my family that my stepfather was my real father. Nah, Pippin. <laughs> no, 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 no. Lee D is my damn father, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and even if you see me with my glasses and we if we do a justification of pictures, you would be like, yes, motherfucker, y'all asses are twins. <laughs> but in reading everything, I'm going to be so honest when I say I felt a little bit jealous. My older brothers have a relationship with my father because he was there. My father and my mother divorced when I was two. So I don't have those memories. I've always been the one to fight to have a relationship with him. And then, of course, going off to college, going off to the military. You know, it's just been a lot of distance the last seven to, you know, ten years. But seeing my baby brother post that, you know, my father has taught him so much, has been there for him, all this other stuff. I'm, I'm going to be so honest. It hurt my heart because it's just like, so you have a relationship with all of your damn children, but the one that looks the most like you, and no matter what happened, I know so many people thought that I hated him. I didn't. I just didn't want to keep subjecting myself to pain. I'm dealing with my emotions, going through the motions. This is kind of where I'm at. Uh, day one and day two, sunset today is going to pretty much be day two of my um, morning. I know I'm supposed to uh, sit Shiva and I'm supposed to sit in my father's house, well, place of residence. I'm not going to do that only because I know it's probably one. By the time I get there, whatever is left of his belongings is probably already gone, but I don't want to be around the spectacle. I just want to go back to Chicago and just mourn. So that's how I'm feeling right now. Day one, day two. I'll be back for day three. Okay, so I'm back. I did not do a day three. I'm doing day four because let me see if I'm doing, if I'm, do my map correctly, what is it? Well, Thursday, Friday, Friday, Saturday, Friday, Sunday. Yeah, so three and four. Again, hey, look, <clears throat> it's nighttime. So, yeah, no shirt. It is what it is. I, I'm not flashing nobody or anything like that. So, but <clears throat> I'm noticing <clears throat> that uh, I'm doing a lot of laughing. And it makes me think about. Uh, a play that Tyler Perry did uh, called Laugh to Keep From Crying. And it's a song that uh, Chandra Corelli did, which is the uh, title track to the actual play that has gotten me somewhat through, but even almost put me in the depths of I'm behind the wheel sing singing these songs to like the fullest capacity and about ready to sit here and have a fucking breakdown in the damn car. I'm just like, okay, I need to stop this. But I think that's kind of how I feel. <clears throat> and today was my last day at work. You know, it was one of those where trying to tie up loose ends. Probably won't ever do that again. Shit like this break, 
I'm probably just going to do what I got to do and just take the time out for myself. But this is what happens when you have a big heart and, you know, you care about, I mean, this is what happens when you literally put yourself on the back burner and you put everyone <clears throat> and everything above yourself. So, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> right now I'm just trying to unwind, uh, kind of just get the stressors that came today off me because it's just like, it's so much going on. And even dealing with someone <clears throat> and, you know, trying to talk business to me, which I understand business, but my thing is when the smoke clears, regardless of whatever relationship I have with my father, you know, regardless of how toxic of a relationship we had, no matter how much we didn't like each other at times, I knew him, I addressed him as such, <clears throat> I respected him as such. That is my father, that is the man that I love. You know, he, you know, without him, I wouldn't be here, you know, and I really can't hate the man when, you know, <laughs> when I am, I won't say a spitting image, but, I mean, hell, I sit here and put his picture next to me, y'all gonna be like, boy, that's you, <laughs> you his twin, but I am getting on a plane tomorrow, going to Chicago, uh, I don't know what awaits me, like, um, I know they're finalizing the obituary right now, and <clears throat> I don't know the exact day of the funeral, but I'm willing to bet it's probably Saturday, which is going to do something to me because I'm pretty much going to bury my father on Shabbat. <laughs> but again, my family is not Jewish, so I cannot expect them to do whatever and them and if they were to bury him friday of course it's going to hurt with the whole uh you know sit and shiver because you know it's seven days and if i'm not mistaken i could be wrong but if i'm not mistaken as soon as um shabbat hits that seven days of mourning is done <clears throat> i mean you can still mourn but it's not i guess to that extent or that a lot extent whatever and i know i was telling you guys that i'm I'm doing my 30 days of mourning, to be technical, because I didn't mention this uh, before. The 30 days of mourning truly starts after the burial. But for me, it's just like getting the news and just going from there. And, you know, hopefully in watching this back, I can kind of just kind of get a grip on what I'm feeling, where I'm at, and how all of this has... Um, Affected me. Because <laughs> more than likely the next time, like the next portion of this video, I'm going like more than like either A, I'm going to do some shooting in uh, the airport. Probably not. <laughs> or I will physically be in Chicago uh, doing my eight days there. <clears throat> and dealing with it. And I probably won't put a Facebook post up until either A, you know, the funeral is over, or until I get back to North Carolina. But I've made it my mission to keep that, sh I'm trying not to curse too much, <laughs> keep that off of uh, social media. And that's only because, you know, like I said, I don't want pity. You know, you can sympathize with me. You can sit here and give me your condolences or whatnot. I don't want your pity. And at the same exact time, when people expect... And I hate to think this way, but <clears throat> you do have people that they don't see it for you. And some people want to exploit a weakness. And just because I'm vulnerable don't mean that I'm weak. And I don't want to put that out there because I know how emotionally unstable. In general, I'm emotionally unstable. This does not help. So I don't want anyone to think that, okay, I want to sit here and push a button. And things are going to be sweet. Because it's not. And that's also a concern that I have when I get home is, um, you know, of course, like I said, not everybody knows the relationship that my father and I have. And I'm just hoping that we don't do the whole blame game, trying to make somebody feel bad for some stuff. You know, I just don't want to deal with it. But we will see. But 
right now, just laughing to keep from crying and also working to stay distracted because that's pretty much what this was. Cause I could have been in Chicago already, <clears throat> but this was me working to, you know, distract myself from real life. And I have not packed my bag. <laughs> so it, what time is it right now? Because this clock is off. It's 9.47, May 16th. And I still have not packed my bag. But honestly, that's not even going to take that long. Because all I'm going to do is throw my funeral clothing in there. And real talk is probably only going to be a uh, some pair of slacks. If I'm happy and lucky, maybe some dress shoes. I'm probably just going to throw some sneakers in there. A um, polo shirt and we just going to keep it pushing after that. Everything else is going to be gym shorts and t-shirts. And I mean... <clears throat> that's just it. I'm not I'm not going to Chicago to stunt or none of that stuff, you know, not doing none of that. I know y'all see my hair is low. Just got like I said, just got a fresh cut. Just grease my hair, so I'm about to throw a do-rag on it, go to bed, let everything kind of sink in and whew, go from there. I think the only other decision that I have to make is will I wear my yarmulke during the uh uh well for the funeral. And I may not, only because it's not about me. And even though people will try to make it about them and probably wear some stuff to bring attention to themselves, it's not about me. I'm not trying to make it about me. Now, I will wear my box top. <laughs> okay. Like I said, my hair will be picked out. It ain't that long. It used to be longer, but yeah. And as y'all can see, this is me just trying to make myself laugh and just stay upbeat. And I'm trying to relish in this because I don't know what's going to happen when I get home. And for all I know, hell, I can step off the plane into O'Hare and then everything hit me. So I'm praying. <laughs> no tears. I can't say no more tears, but no tears. In the meantime and between time. But like I said, you guys are sort of kind of taking this um, journey with me through, um, you know, just, I guess, my grieving process. And uh, like I said, hopefully this can maybe give you guys a little bit of insight, not necessarily into me, but just kind of, I guess, into emotions and help others really <clears throat> take the time to search deep within because you know again in America it's like somebody died okay good when you come back to work but you know rather how does it feel to explore these emotions sit here and mourn somebody you could celebrate that person's life but still give yourself time to mourn so we'll see so that's all that I have and more than likely the next time I come on here I will probably more than likely have a shirt on <laughs>